Welcome back. Now, in the last video, we had found mathematical expressions for different types of energy, including potential energy, kinetic energy, the total energy, and the relationship between them all. And that's neat that we found the expressions and all, but in this video what we're going to try and do is really see what these expressions really mean and, the, for, and how they apply for the mass and spring system. And to do that, we're going to take a look at how the energy changes as a function of displacement and how the energy changes as a function of time. And we're going to do that both qualitatively and graphically. So let's first start off qualitatively. Here we have a mass and spring system. We have like five different snapshots of it oscillating in time. This little red line right here is used to denote the resting length. We're going to say that at this point here, we're going to say that x is equal to 0. And here the spring is, at this middle one here, the spring is at its resting length. Here it's extended out, here it's compressed in. So let's take a look right here. Let's just say we're, extend, we're just extending out our mass and spring system to a distance, let's say, x is equal to capital A. Well, at this distance, uh, we see that the spring is extended, so it does have energy stored and it. it has a potential to do work. And that potential is going to be equal to u is equal to 1 half k x squared, but in this case x is equal to this displacement a, so u is equal to 1 half k a squared. Now let's take a look at the right here, this snapshot. Here we see that the displacement is not quite zero, but it's not quite the maximum displacement A. So we're just going to say that potential energy U is greater than zero. It still has some potential considering it's still relatively extended. Now let's look at this middle one right here. At this snapshot, the spring is at its resting length. So you could say that at this point it's at, uh, it has a displacement of x is equal to zero, which means that the potential is equal to zero, or the potential energy is equal to zero. And this makes sense because at its resting length, the spring is neither con uh, extended or contracted, sorry, extended, compressed, so it has no potential to do work at this point. Then once when it starts to be compressed a bit, we have a bit of a negative displacement right here. So we could say that this is a, um, a negative x value, but since u is equal to 1 half k x squared, we still say that the potential is going to be greater than zero. And then finally here we're going to have it at its maximum displacement, negative a. So x is equal to negative a at this point, so our potential is equal to 1 half k negative a squared, which is just a squared. So that's the potential as a function of displacement. Let's try and graph it out. So it's going to be two axes. Let's make this displacement. We'll make this energy as a function of displacement. Well, we know that it starts off at, uh, well, we could start off here at x is positive a, let's denote this as zero, and denote this as negative a. And what happens? Well, we know the expression for potential as a function of displacement. It's one half kx squared. It, and if you're familiar, that's a parabola. So we can just graph it out right here. It starts off at, well, just draw that right there. Now if you notice, this parabola is bound. It's bound at a particular value, and that value is one oops, is one half k a squared. And the reason it's bound is because one half k a squared is a total energy. And at no point in time can the potential energy exceed the total energy of the system. So here we see a uh, nice little graph of potential energy as a function of displacement. 
Now let's take a look at kinetic energy. But if you notice, kinetic energy is defined as one half mv squared. It's, it's going to be tricky to get this in a, a expression in terms of displacement x. So one thing we could do is we can utilize this this uh, fact right here, the relationship that the total energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential, to try and find try and use this to find an expression for kinetic energy. Basically, we're going to say that K is equal to, oops, one sec, K is equal to total energy E minus potential energy U. Essentially saying that the kinetic energy is almost like the leftover amount of energy uh, after, well, after the potential energy. So we know that the total energy is going to be given by one half K A squared, and that the Potential energy is one half k x squared, so we can just write that this is one half k. I'm just going to factor out the one half k terms. We're going to get a squared minus x squared. So here we have a squared. This is just a constant, and here we have a negative x squared term. So it's going to be a negative parabola, or a downward pointing parabola, which means that we can demonstrate kinetic energy as a function of displacement is this downward parabola right here. So what this downward parabola is saying is that at the two extremes the kinetic energy is zero and at zero the kinetic energy is maximum value one half k a squared. So let's see if we can understand what that means qualitatively. We know at this extreme value of displacement right here, the spring goes from traveling in one direction to traveling in a different direction. So in between that time, it's going to have to stop. And when it stops to change direction, the velocity is going to be equal to zero, which means that the kinetic energy at that time is going to have to be equal to zero. This is what we call a turning point. All the, all the total energy is in the form of uh, potential energy, and there's no kinetic energy. So, at this snapshot, it's starting to move in this direction, so it's gaining velocity, so we know that k is going to be greater than zero. At this point right here, the potential energy is zero, and we still have the same amount of total energy, which means that all of the energy is in the form of kinetic energy. So kinetic energy has a max value right here maximum value. And that's going to be equal to one half k a squared, or if you'd like, one half m omega squared a squared. So now, what happens, what happens at this point right here in the next snapshot? Now as we start moving, we're starting to come in, uh, there's going to be a force in the opposite direction, so it's going to start slowing down. So the k, uh, the potential, no, sorry, the kinetic energy starts to decrease a bit, but it's still going to be greater than zero because it still is kinetic energy. Then the kinetic energy keeps decreasing till we get another turning point. This is a point where it changes direction, the velocity is equal to zero, so our kinetic energy is equal to zero. So this is what this is qualitatively saying. This is what like these parabolas mean in terms of what's going on with the mass and spring system. Now, let's try and extend this out a little bit by just talking about what happens with the energy as a function of time. Let's just draw that out. Got there's our two axes. We're gonna put time here, and we're going to put energy as a function of time here. Now, we found in the last video by uh, what potential energy and kinetic energy are as a function of time for this system by plugging in the general solution for the system, essentially plugging the amplitude phase form of x and v. So we found that for potential energy, u as a function of time is equal to one half k a squared cosine squared omega t minus phi. 
and we found that the kinetic energy as a function of time is one half k a squared sine squared omega t minus v. So let's just see what happens if we graph this out. Um, let's do potential energy first. Here we're dealing with a cosine squared term. So normally what is a cosine term, it goes from one to zero to negative one to zero back to one. But when you square it, the negative term becomes a positive term. So it just goes from one to zero back to one back to zero, etc. And just to make this nice and convenient, uh, let's say that this is the case where the initial velocity of the spring is equal to zero. We just basically saying that we set the system up just by displacing it. We didn't actually give it any initial velocity. What that means in this case is it means that our phi term, which is equal to arctan of v naught over x naught, is equal to arctan of zero, since v naught is equal to zero, and the arctan of zero is just equal to zero. So if we give the system no initial kick or no initial velocity, we find that this phi term is zero. And the reason I bring that up is just for convenience sake for drawing, if there's no phase term. So let's just draw this potential energy, this cosine squared term. It's gonna have a, it's gonna start off with cosine squared is equal to one at t is equal to zero, which means that this potential energy is gonna be equal to one half k a squared, and it looks like a cosine squared wave, so that's going to go down and up and down and up and down and up. And you get the idea. Relatively poorly drawn, but the idea still comes across. Now let's draw the kinetic energy term, where it's phi, phi is equal to zero. Now with a sine wave, it normally goes from zero to one, to zero to negative one, to zero. But since we're squaring it, it's gonna look something like this. It's gonna go from zero, max value, down to zero, down to, up to max, and it's gonna oscillate. Whoops. Okay. Now, if you notice, the kinetic and the potential energy terms both hit this one maximum value of one half k a squared. And we know that that max value is our total energy. And we can see, hopefully through the relatively poorly drawn graphs, that our total energy, we're gonna say E, is equal to the sum of this potential energy, the blue curve, and the kinetic energy, the orange curve, at every single point in time. So at every single point in time, the, well, the total energy is conserved, and as time goes on, the energy is redistributed between potential energy, and kinetic energy, and potential energy, and kinetic energy, etc. The energies oscillate. So what did we find in this video? We found that the energy as a function of displacement is parabolic. Well, at least the potential energy is parabolic, the kinetic energy is an inverse parabola, is an inverse parabola, and the sum of the two curves is this constant line right here. Now, this is a little foreshadowing for the next few videos. We've got to find that this parabolic potential energy curve is actually really important and is characteristic for all forms of simple harmonic motion. We tend to approximate simple harmonic motion with a, parabola, a parabolic potential energy curve. But we'll get to that in the next video. And uh, the other thing we found is we found what the potential, the kinetic energy, sorry, the potential energy, the kinetic energy, the total energy look like as a function of time. And we see how they oscillate between potential energy and kinetic energy, both as it goes on and as it displaces back and forth. So with that, I'll hopefully see you in the next video.